Okay, so we have one final section to go through and then you are officially done with material for this class. So our last section is 8.4. It's going to be about volume and surface area. So in section 8.3, we worked in two dimension. And in that two dimension, we were able to find um, the area. And then we also were able to step down one dimension and talk about perimeter. So that's when you walk around some object. Now we're moving into 3D. So it's definitely gonna be a little bit harder for me to draw these perfectly. Um, but we can talk about something in three dimensions and something that's in two dimensions in terms of these objects. So when we talk an about an object in three dimension, the first thing that you're going to think of probably is going to be volume. So our volume, which is denoted with a V, is a measure of the capacity of a 3D figure. So basically, if I have an object that that's that, look, if I have an object that's the exact size as the image we have, if I could pour in water, how much water would that take up? So because this is measuring that 3D capacity, your units are going to be cubed on that. Surface area is something different. It is an area, so it's going to be units squared. It's denoted by SA to make that distinction between area and surface area. Basically, you're going to have a bunch of sides that take up um, that specific shape. So this is the sum of the areas of the surfaces. of a 3D figure. So the surface area is going to be measured in units squared. So just like we did for our two-dimensional stuff, we're going to start with our three-dimensional things um, and then we'll, or three-dimensional formulas, and then we'll try some examples and we have more terminology that's gonna be introduced in this class because there's gonna be some special 3D shapes. So we're gonna start with the solid. I'm gonna write the formula for its volume. And so the volume is something you definitely want to know. Surface area, some of these you're going to need to know, but some of them are not going to be as important because you're going to see they're kind of crazy formulas. But this way, when they pop up in your homework, you're not like, what the heck is that? So the first solid, we're going to start nice. It's going to be a rectangular solid. So I'm going to do my best to draw these. I got the front, you can think of this basically like an Amazon box. The side, the other side, the other side, and then we go ahead and connect the dots. And I'm gonna ghost in the back of these as well with dotted lines so you can really see that those are 3D. And this would run along there. Okay. Let's see if I can do that a little bit nicer. There we go. That's a lot better. Not perfect, but again, that's okay. You don't need to be perfect. Okay. So this is our box. It's got some length, it's got some width, and it's got some height to it. But one thing I want to kind of emphasize is where these formulas come from. Because if you remember the 2D shapes, 
a lot of times the area is the, or the volume is going to be really easy to extend from there. So if you look at the bottom, let's go, that's dotted, that's why. <laughs> if you look at the bottom, it's got a rectangle for the very base. Okay. And then all we've done is from that rectangle, we've added some height going upwards. So the volume for a rectangle is going to be length times width times the height. And the easiest way you can think of this, this length times width is exactly the area of the base. And then this H is the height. So this is going to be an extension for pretty much all of our formulas we come up with for volume, okay? So my base is a rectangle, its area is length times width. I've now added this third dimension, so I multiply by the height. For our surface area, this would be the sides of each of these boxes. So you have a top and a bottom, and both of those have area length times width. So you have two sides that have area length times width. Then you also have the left and right sides, and those would be W times H. So we also have two sides with area WH. And then finally, we have the front of this box and the back of this box. Both of those are length times the height. So we have two sides with area length times height. Okay. So that's one formula you do want to know the surface area for. If we make this even more precise and talk about I don't want to call it a square solid. We're just going to call it a cube. So that's going to be every side is a square. You can think of this basically as a dice. So there is my cube. Got to do the backs of my cube. Again, sorry, it's not like super, super precise, but only so much I can do drawing this. Okay. And so here, each of these has the same side length, which we'll call S. So our base is a square. So when I go to do the volume, the base has area side times side and we multiply by the height. So this is one of the nicest formula. It's really just a side cube, but it still follows this same pattern where it is the area of the base times the height. Okay, let me make these arrows to be a little bit easier. And for our surface area, each side is a square. You have six sides in total, six sides with area S squared. Okay. Now we move on to a cylinder. So this is kind of like, you can think of it just as a can or like a Pringles can even, that's a good way to, to describe it. There's my can, and it always does that. I want a nice curved shape, close enough. And then it's got the back of it. It's basically top and bottom are a circle, and then you've got a height again. So to know about the cylinder, you need to know the radius of the circle that forms the top and bottom. So when I go to find the volume, 
it still falls into the formula. The area of the base is pi r squared times the height. So still same process. Our surface area, a little bit more complicated to think of. The first one, we can think of the area of the top and bottom. Those are both circles. So I got top of the can, bottom of the can. Their individual areas are pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. And you have two of them. So these pieces are the top and bottom of the can. Then we need to add on the area of the side. Basically think if you cut this can just down the side, you'd really unravel it and it would be a rectangle. Just take a sheet of paper, roll it up. It gives you a cylinder without the top and bottom. So this is the side, this is the height. When this comes together, this is what forms that circle. So really this distance is going to be the distance around the circle. So the side length is going to be that circumference, two pi r, okay? So when I want the area of the side, it's two pi r times h, because it's a rectangle. So this is our side. It's the circumference times the height, okay? And so in total, this would be two pi r squared plus two pi r h. And that's going to be our surface area for a cylinder. Okay. So you have that visual down there. Next up, we have a sphere. So that's just basically a ball. So you have a 3D image and you can draw up and down, but I think it makes it cluttered. That one alone shows it's 3D. and then you need the radius of the sphere. This volume, not as nice. It's 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So I don't have a great explanation for why that's the case. Um, you can think of the radius cubed because you need three dimensions. So radius is the only thing I need to know about a sphere to be able to get that shape. The pi, pi always is attached to circles. The four thirds is the one that's kind of funky. Um, so this unfortunately is gonna be one you just have to memorize for now. Same thing with the surface area. I don't care if you really know the surface area though, um, but it's gonna be in two dimensions. So you're gonna to wanna to use this, but don't worry about memorizing that one. Then our last figure for now is a cone. So you can think of an ice cream cone. It's got a circular base and then it comes to a sharp point. So you need two things again. You need the radius of this circle. And then I need to know what is the distance from end to end. So what is the height of this cone? Okay. And our volume is going to follow that same pattern. You can think of your base as a circle. So the area of that base is pi r squared. Just leave a little bit of room times the height. But 
this would be the exact formula for a cylinder, and this is not a cylinder. So if I kind of ghost in two other pieces, I'm missing these two sides. So really, I'm getting one third my cylinder. So this comes from the fact that you chopped the cylinder into three pieces. And that's going to be another generalization we're going to see when we talk about pyramids very soon. The surface area, do not waste your breath memorizing this. It is disgusting. Pi r squared is nice. That's going to be the area of this. Finding the area of what gets wrapped around, absolutely not. It is pi r times the square root of r squared plus h squared. So you can see, nasty. <laughs> so do not bother with that one. All right, so let's try a few examples. Let's find the volume and surface area. Of the figure. And let's start with our lovely cylinder. All right, so we are told this distance is six inches, and then this side is 24 inches. So I think it's going to be easiest for you to start with the volume. It is pi r squared times the height. So our volume is pi times our radius, which is 6 squared, and our height is 24. So 6 squared is 36. Multiply that by 24. Exactly this would be 864 pi inches cubed. So it is that volume. If I did this right in my calculator, this is about 2,714.34 inches cubed. Now, if we go onto the surface area, I need to focus on the top and bottom. And then I need to focus on that side. So our top and bottom have area pi r squared, and we have two of them. And the side is, remember, the circumference times our height. So for this figure, our surface area would be 2 pi, our radius is 6. And then over here, our radius is 6, our height is 24. So if you plug that into your calculator, 6 squared is 36 times 2, that is 72 pi. And then 2 times 6 times 24 should give you 288 pi. They are the same thing. I have 72 pi plus 288 more. In total, we have 360 pi. And then our units, because this is an area, is inches squared. And again, hopefully I plug this into my calculator right, but it should give you about 1,030.97 inches squared. Let's try one more of these, and then we're going to talk about something else special. We will do a nice box. Let's 
see. Might be able to do this. There we go. That's oh, much nicer. Get that in. And then connect our dots. Beautiful. There's a nice cube. Okay. So we are told this side is 12 feet. This side is six feet and this side is three feet. Our volumes of rectangles are the best. It is just the product of the length, width, and height. So the volume is 12 times six times three, which is 216 and our units will be feet cubed. For our surface area, we have a bunch of different stuff. If we look at top and bottom, those have sides 12 by six. So I've got two sides with length and width, two sides with width and height, two sides with length and height. So I've got two sides that have area 12 times six. Two sides, if I do the left and the right next, which are six times three. And then if we go front and back, those are two sides with 12 and three as its dimensions. Okay. So 12 times six will be 72. Six times three is 18. 12 times three is 36. So this is 144 plus 36 plus 72. In total, our surface area is 252. Our units for area are units squared, so feet squared. Okay, so something really cool happens in a lot of these shapes. Let me scroll back up, here we go. So all of these ones that have these really sharp edges, that's really about all I've done so far, are a special type of solids. And those are called polyhedra. A single is called a polyhedron. Okay, so we learned about polygons, five-sided, six-sided, they have all those special names. Our 3D extension is a polyhedron. So a polyhedron is a closed surface formed by the union of polygonal regions. Okay. So our cube prime example, it's got a rectangle on each side. So a rectangle or six rectangles form this shape and a rectangle is a polyhedron, okay? You can think of kind of like a D4 dice, it's hard to draw. So this shape has triangles on all its sides. And then we've got the back to it too. So every side is a triangle. You could think of a D8 dice if you do play any type of games. This one's hard to draw. Still, every side is a triangle. But they meet in like a square in the middle. Okay. So kind of like, or you can think of it also if you ever played The Sims, um, the little thing that sits above their head. That is a polygon, it's like a diamond. And then you can make it even funkier. 
I could do a trapezoid. Doesn't have to be perfect either. And that is our top and our bottom. And then we go ahead and connect those dots to form our 3D figure. Don't have a realistic example for what this looks like then. <laughs> but it's gonna be a shape of that form. So we have names for all of these as well, kind of like we have the sides and we have the vertices. The vertices are still the same here when you have these sharp points where these line meets. These are called our vertexes. Okay. Now, all of these lines are called the edges. So they're not called sides, they're an edge because you can peer off of them if you stand right on it. And then finally, all of these polygonal sides, they have a bunch of names for them, but the main one we're going to use is that these are called faces. And so something really cool happens if you have a polyhedron. There is a set combination that you can use between the edges, faces, and vertices. So we learned about Euler diagrams and that was some famous mathematician. This guy was into like everything. He has so many papers. He also came up with a really cool formula regarding these, which is Euler's polyhedron formula. And what that tells us, if we take the number of vertices, subtract the number of edges, and add the number of faces, it will always equal two. Okay. So I'm gonna go through with our rectangle to show you that this formula does indeed hold. Gonna fill in all of these. Let's go ahead and delete all these little ones for right now because I need to count them soon. Oh, nope, didn't mean to do that. There we go. Okay. Okay, so here is our cube. Let's start by counting the number of vertices. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in total. Then if we count the number of edges, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We've got 12 edges in total. And then the number of faces, we have six sides to a box. So if I plug this into the formula, if I do the number of vertices minus the number of edges, that's negative four, plus six, it does indeed give us two, okay? And you could try this with any shape that you come up with. You're gonna see it's gonna have to hold to this pattern. So now we can do a different example. Maybe I can't actually draw the shape that's given to me because it's really grotesque and complicated and I'm not good at coming up with a creative way for how this is formed immediately. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is use this formula. So we are told a certain polyhedron 
has 15 vertices and seven faces. We're going to determine the number of edges. So I have no idea, I'm gonna call X, we're gonna let that be the number of edges. Plugging this into our formula with all of our known pieces, the number of vertices is 15, no idea how many edges there are, and our number of faces is seven. This better equal to. So if I go ahead and combine the 15 and the seven, that will give us 22 minus X equals two. And I want to solve for X. So we go ahead and subtract 22 from both sides, which gives us negative X is negative two or negative 20, forgot that. And then we need to get rid of that one. So we go ahead and divide both sides by negative one and we get X is equal to 20. So in total, there are 20 edges in the polyhedron. Okay. Now we have another special 3D type um, so a polyhedron, there's no restrictions on the side. They can be completely different. So like here, top and bottom are going to be trapezoids. Here, they're all triangles. So that's perfectly okay. They don't have to be the same triangle. They don't have to be the same trapezoid. There doesn't have to be uniformity to it. Our next type does have some uniformity. uniformity and that's going to be a prism. A prism is a polyhedron whose bases are congruent polygons and whose sides are quadrilaterals. Okay. So let's think, let's do a triangle. Here's my top. My bottom is exactly the same shape. And then I just go ahead and I connect these sides. So you can see all of the sides are quadrilaterals. They don't have to be rectangles. They don't have to be squares. They can be parallelograms. It's just all the sides are four-sided. So in turn, you have this top, which is your main shape. So we call this the top base. And then we have the same shape on the bottom. And that is our bottom base. So you can get pretty funky with these. I'm gonna go ahead and steal this so I don't have to redraw it. I did draw. a prism here where the top and bottom are exactly the same. So that is the top base, don't want that. And then the bottom base is exactly the same.
If I wanna talk about the volume of these, it follows that same formula, area of the base times the height. So the volume of a prism is V, we're gonna call this capital B times H. Where capital B is the area of the base and H is the height. Okay. So let's try that with an example. Okay. We're gonna determine the volume of the figure. So we're going to have a triangle. There we go. Duplicate this. That is our other side of the triangle. And then we go ahead and connect those dots. Or all of those. Edges. Okay. That is our shape, kind of like a cheese wedge. Okay. This is a right triangle on each side. This side is 12 meters, this is 10 meters, and this is 18 meters. So my base is a right triangle. That is the shape that is on top and bottom that we just connect those like pieces to. So for this, my area of the base is one half the base times the height. So one half, 10 times 12. So one half times 10 is five times 12. My area of the base is 60 my units on that would be meters squared. Okay. So ultimately my volume is the area of the base times my height. And this is my height, because that's the distance connecting those two bases. So my volume is 60 meters squared times 18 meters which is 1,080 meters cubed. Okay. So we'll get some more practice with this soon, um, but I have another special type of polyhedron again, and that is going to be a pyramid. So a pyramid Kind of like you think of when you think of the pyramids in Egypt, it is a special polyhedron. But they only have one base. And they have a sharp point. So I have my base, which could be a parallelogram. Oh, my app just crashed, nice. There we go, at least that didn't. So 
So we've got our base, which is a polyhedron or a quadrilateral, sorry. And then we just connect these to a sharp point. So this is what you think of probably when you think of the pyramids. You've got your base shape here. And then you need to know the distance from that sharp point down to the base, so a height. You can have a trapezoid as your base though. That's not a problem. And it makes for a funky pyramid, but it's still a pyramid because it comes to that sharp point. So this is my base down here. And again, to know this volume, you need to know the distance down to the base from that sharp point. You can have a triangle as your base. So here is my base. And then from each side, I draw up to get a sharp So again, I need to know that distance straight down to the base. Let's see if I can squeeze this in. Nice. Okay. When we think of the volume, It is the area of the base times the height, but because I'm missing the sides, if I were to have that um, prism, I really have one third that volume. But this is still where B is the area of the base and H is the height. Okay. So it follows the same idea. So I just have two more examples. We're going to determine the area or the volume of the shaded region. Need a nice big picture for this. Okay. Not gonna be drawn perfect to scale. It's not quite a rectangle or a square. Draw this big. I'm not going to draw every part of it in. I'm just going to draw down here as well. Okay. And so we've got a cube. Inside this cube, we have a pyramid that goes all the way to the top. So filling in our pieces, this height here is four feet and this base is three feet by three feet. So it's a nice square base. The volume we want to find is the volume inside inside the cube but outside the pyramid. Okay. 
So just like in our problems where we had to do area shaded region, to find the volume of this shaded region, I'm going to take the volume of the bigger object, which is our box, and I need to take out the volume of this pyramid. So I've got to find those two pieces to be able to find the shaded region. The volume of the box is not so bad. It is going to be length times width times height. So it's three times three times four, which is 36 and our units here are feet cubed. When we go to find the volume of the pyramid, it is one third I need the area of the base times the height. Okay, and our height is nice. That's just four. So our height is four. And my base, I'll try to use a different color, this is purple is a square, so it's three times three. So the area of the base is a square or three times three. Okay. So this is one third times nine times four. If you do a third times nine, it's three. So this is three times four. The volume of our pyramid is 12 feet cubed. So I've got my larger region, I've got my period, pyramid, the volume of the shaded region is as follows. It is the volume of the box minus the volume of the pyramid, which is 36 minus 12 to give us a total of 24 and our units are feet cubed. Okay. So I have one last example and then we are officially done with material. We're gonna work with a trapezoid. So kind of like, this is gonna be kind of a shape of like a trowel they used to feed pigs, Let's see, okay. So we go ahead, we've got the same. Well, let's see if I can move that a little bit, make it more clear. There we go, that should be better. Go ahead and connect those like pieces. Okay. And so, we need a ton of information. We are told this back here is 12 inches. The distance from here to here is nine inches. This side is eight inches. And this side is four feet. First thing we wanna do is we wanna find the volume in cubic inches. Okay. 
problem though, not in the same unit. So remember one foot is equivalent to 12 inches. So four feet would be four times that amount. It is 48 inches. So be careful in your homework if you notice things aren't exactly the same. To be able to find this volume, I've got to use that prism formula. My base is a trapezoid. I've connected two trapezoids. So the area of the base So I'll put in parentheses is our trapezoid is as follows. Okay. Remember the area of a trapezoid is one half the height times the sum of those bases. Okay. So the area of this base is one half. My height is nine inches. That would be this quantity here. This side is eight and this side is 12. So they give us that piece back here. So I multiply this by eight plus 12. Okay. So that's going to be one half times nine times 20. which if you go through this, that would be just nine times 10 really. This is 90 and the units at this point are inches squared. So the volume is then the area of the base times the height. Area of our base is 90 and our height is 48. It's gonna be this distance here. So in total, the volume would be 4,320 inches cubed. Okay. And now to refresh us on conversions, we're gonna convert the volume to cubic feet. So we're starting with 4,320 inches cubed. Think of this as 4,320 inches times inches times inches. So I need to convert three inches. So I need inches on the bottom and I can get rate right to feet in the top. And 12 inches is one foot. So I've got to do this three times to convert those three inches. So one cancels, the second cancels, the third cancels, and we're left with feet times feet times feet in the numerator. So this is the same as 4,320, a one, a one, a one in the top, 12, 12, 12 in the bottom, and our units are feet cubed. So this is 4,320 in the top. You do 12 times 12 times 12, so you get 1,728. And if you do that division, it works out pretty nicely. It is 2.5 feet cubed. Okay. All right. So that is it for this section and really material for the class. Um, next week we don't have any live classes so really you can kind of just get caught up with stuff, work on your homework, do whatever you need to do. If you do need anything, I'm here, but if not, good luck on all the rest of your stuff.